Picture this. You wake up one morning to discover a sequence of hoof-like markings spanning more than 40 miles, crossing unattainable landscapes such as rooftops, rivers, and haystacks. These cannot be the evidence of any known earthly being. This was the uncanny scenario faced by the people of England in February 1855. In the silent snowy setting, a perplexing view welcomed the inhabitants. A sequence of perplexing imprints, similar to those of a split hoof, stretched across the rural area. These markings ascended over rooftops, passed through rivers, and even navigated haystacks. These imprints, appearing overnight, spanned a distance that was beyond the capability of any known being, especially one that could climb such a variety of landscapes. The inhabitants, understandably, were bewildered and scared. Murmurs of supernatural elements filled the atmosphere, theories of devilish beings making their presence known in the quaint town. Some even feared a looming end of the world, a signal of destruction etched into the snow. However, no definitive explanation was discovered. The prints, as abruptly as they showed up, ceased, leaving only queries behind. Despite all the conjecture, the root and motive of these footprints remain undisclosed, causing us to ponder what indeed transpired that winter in Devon. Panic calls reverberated across the frequency spectrum, an ocean vessel requiring urgent assistance. But upon reaching the location, a sight straight out of a horror movie awaited the rescuers. The entire crew of the marine transporter from Netherlands, codenamed SS Urang Medan, lifeless, their visages petrified in fear. In 1947, urgent calls for assistance were fervently transmitted from this Dutch ship, seemingly lost amidst the convoluted waves of the Strait of Malacca. Braving the odds, the aid providers stepped on board, just to be met with a scene beyond the boundaries of imagination. The crew was no more, their bodies contorted in abnormal shapes, their faces reflecting extreme terror. The anomaly deepened with no visible reason for the sudden demise. No signs of violence, no traces of a lethal ailment, absolutely nothing. The ship seemed untouched, but the seafarers had met a terrible fate. Speculations began to circulate, creating a cyclone of dark thoughts. Could it be the work of a paranormal force? Or an interstellar being, maybe? The dread experienced on board the marine transporter from Netherlands remains unexplored, serving as a chilling reminder of the secrets hidden within the marine abyss. A horrific crime scene a dwelling marked by the remnants of an atrocious act, and the subsequent occupants. They assert their experiences with activities beyond the natural realm, step into the dark tale of Amityville. In 1974, a man named Ronald DeFeo Jr. performed the unthinkable, ending the lives of six relatives inside their household in a place called Amityville, situated in New York. Many believe their ethereal forms are still present. In the following year, the residents became home to the Lutz family, who soon began disclosing startling incidents. Portal entrances would abruptly close, sudden cold areas would manifest, and an unremitting sense of surveillance was ever-present. The new occupants even confessed to witnessing spectral figures, leading to conjectures that the dwelling was inhabited by the vengeful spirits of the DeFeo clan. Eventually, the Lutz family deserted the property, leaving behind the ghostly presences. This Amityville household stands as a disconcerting emblem of the unresolved, prompting a question that lingers. Was it genuinely a place of supernatural happenings, or merely a dwelling with a bleak history? In the vast realms of the ocean, two images emerge alongside a vessel. These are not survivors, they are perceived visions of two associates who encountered an unfortunate accident aboard the SS Watertown in 1924. Deep within the sea, the team on the SS Watertown were left bewildered, as they reported spotting the expressions of their deceased friends in the water. James Courtney and Michael Meehan, two seamen who met death in an unusual mishap, seemed to have surfaced again, their features subtly visible in the waves. The ship's leader, trying to comprehend the unexplainable, captured this strange spectacle on film. The photograph, a disturbing testament to the team's experience, rocked the seafaring community. Debates flared like a wild storm. Were these actual supernatural sights, or were they simply illusions of light and shadow, exploiting the grieving minds of the team? The faces of the SS Watertown persist to disturb us, a spectral reminder of life's delicacy and the unanswered questions that death leaves behind. Nestled in the tranquil landscape of Essex, England, is a dwelling known as England's Most Haunted. 
Step into the world of Borley Rectory, a place teeming with inexplicable sounds, spectral appearances, and paranormal activity. Built in 1863, it rapidly acquired a reputation for the macabre. The individuals residing here were plagued by unexplained happenings, items shifting on their own, ghostly figures gliding through walls, and a disconcerting medley of whispers reverberating through its passageways. It wasn't merely a structure, it was a waking nightmare. The status of the rectory amplified, drawing in those fascinated by the paranormal and thrill seekers. However, its reign of fear was abruptly ended in 1939, swallowed by a fire that left behind only embers and a legacy of terror. Yet the past's resonance lingers. Disturbing tales of spectral encounters persistently reverberate through time, whispers of a haunting that won't fade away. Borley Rectory might be extinct, but its chilling legacy persists, a testament to the unsolved mysteries a dwelling can harbour. A renowned writer and reporter goes missing in Mexico, leaving no signs or clues behind. This is the intriguing case of Ambrose Bierce. In 1913, Bierce, a man known for his sharp intelligence and cynical humour, headed for Mexico. He was on a mission to witness the Mexican Revolution up close. Yet, after December of that year, Bierce just disappeared. The correspondence he'd been sending to his loved ones ceased, and he was never seen or heard from again. The circumstances of his unexplained absence remain as puzzling as the man himself. Was he a casualty of the brutal revolution he had dared to chronicle? Did he encounter something beyond our comprehension, as his strange stories might hint at? Or did he simply choose to disconnect from society and live a solitary life? Despite countless inquiries and continuous guesswork, no conclusive evidence has been found. The destiny of Beers is still unresolved, an untraceable figure in the records of history leaving us with a chilling question. What exactly occurred to the man named Ambrose Bierce? A city seized by an insatiable desire to dance. Crowds pirouetting for days until they crumble in fatigue. Welcome to Strasbourg, Alsace in the warmth of 1518 summer. In this charming location, a peculiar spectacle took place as men, women and children found themselves engaged in an impassioned dance. Their movement was not to music or rhythm, but to an unseen force that pushed them to dance until they fell from utter exhaustion or, alarmingly, danced to their demise. Many theories have been put forth attempting to decipher this peculiar event. Some point to mass hysteria, a group reaction to adversities such as illness and starvation. Alternatively, there are those that believe in otherworldly reasons, divine retribution or demonic possession. A further hypothesis brings up ergot poisoning, a trippy state induced by eating rye bread contaminated with certain fungi. But none of these conjectures fully illuminate the onset or conclusion of the dancing epidemic. The inexplicable dance fever of 1518 remains an unsolved puzzle of history, underlining the enigmas that the past has left us with. In a field near the quaint village of Woolpit in England, two children make their entrance. Their skin bears an unusual green tint their language is foreign, and their roots remain untraceable. During the 12th century, local dwellers discovered these extraordinary youngsters, who appeared lost and scared. Their account was equally extraordinary. They professed to be from an underground world enveloped in green luminescence, an unfamiliar place referred to as St. Martin's Land. At first, they could only stomach raw beans, but soon they adapted to a regular diet, and their green tint faded away. The male child, unfortunately, didn't make it. But the female matured, mastered English and was christened Agnes. Her storytelling of a twilight realm beneath the surface of the earth continued baffle and captivate. A range of theories have been put forward to decipher this puzzling incident. Some believe they were Flemish newcomers, left parentless and malnourished. Some lean towards the possibility of extraterrestrial or alternate reality theories. The peculiar children of Woolpit remain an unfathomable paradox. An intriguing tale from history that leaves us wondering what could their true origin be? A lifeless body on a sandy shore, a tiny piece of parchment, an undeciphered sequence of symbols, and an inexplicable, lethal substance. Welcome to the perplexing puzzle of the ended case, a notorious conundrum from the land down under. During the warm days of 1948, an unidentified corpse was found on Adelaide's Somerton Beach. The man had no IDs, 
Even his pockets were devoid of a wallet, containing only a tiny piece of parchment inscribed with Tamam Shud, a phrase of Persian origin meaning ended or completed. This discovery guided sleuths to a concealed pocket meticulously stitched into the man's trousers, containing a sequence of symbols that has yet to be decoded. The interpretations surrounding the situation are as diverse as they are fascinating. Some theorists hint at the man being an undercover agent caught in the web of Cold War intrigue, while others speculate that he could be a casualty of a romantic entanglement turned deadly. An even more imaginative speculation proposes the influence of forces beyond the natural world. Regardless of years of meticulous probing, the man's true identity and the reason for his demise continue to elude discovery. The ended case continues as an unsolved narrative of demise and fascination, a riddle that endures to confound those in pursuit of its solution. Two sisters meet an unfortunate end in a car collision. One year on, their mother gives birth to twins who astonishingly reflect the behaviours and traits of their late sisters. Could this represent a case of reincarnation, or is it merely a random occurrence? In 1957, England was jolted by the heart-rending event of the death of two sisters, Joanna and Jacqueline. The grief of their passing was profound, but the subsequent year brought a glimmer of optimism for the bereaved family. The mother of the departed girls welcomed twins into the world, Gillian and Jennifer. What happened next was nothing less than extraordinary. From a tender age, the twins started exhibiting characteristics strikingly similar to those of their late sisters. They requested toys that had belonged to the deceased siblings, despite never having seen them before. They identified locales they had never visited, places their late sisters were familiar with. Psychologists and researchers in the field of the supernatural were captivated. Some staunchly supported the idea of reincarnation, while doubters considered these resemblances to be mere happenstance or subconscious influence from their parents. This intriguing case of the twins prompts us to question our comprehension of life and death. Could reincarnation indeed be a reality?